Do you see any risk out there that that landing may not be as soft as we all think right now? Well, you know, I, I mean, you can't overstate your, your opening there. There was, as you know, Time survey showed 100 percent of economists predicting 100 percent chance of recession. And instead, we're closing a year where uh, uh, you just saw 3.3 percent growth in the four quarter. You've seen now 3.4 percent growth on average since President Biden's been in. But I'll tell you, as someone who's been around a while, when you see three, you see a surprise strong GDP number, 3.3 percent growth, you see inflation, you know, PCE inflation at 2 percent core down, and you see disposable real incomes up 4.2 percent. I mean, that's a little bet. That, that's better than normal, even Goldilocks. That's kind of Goldilocks plus. So, you know, for us, yes, it is confirming of the fact that we believe that having a strong recovery and strong investment plan would actually lead to a more resilient economy that uh, would have more growth. Uh, and more resilience, both at the consumer, the state, local level. And, you know, here we are now, uh, the country that has both the highest growth, the highest real wage growth, and the lowest inflation mm -hmm. in the G7. I mean, that's, uh, uh, you know, is that, is that good enough? No, it's not good enough because there's a lot of families that even though uh, they may know intellectually that this was global inflation and the U.S. is inflation yeah. was lower you know it still hurts when you go through that gas pump or grocery line and you feel like it's taken a bigger mm -hmm. part of your paycheck but now i think we i think it is starting to sink in that things are looking better you know that that some prices are not just moderating but they're actually coming down and some people might be frustrated that some things are still maybe higher than they were in 2020 sure. but i think well you have to i say think that, in the though, consumer right, confidence in the consumer confidence, you're starting to see, it, the, you know, the biggest uptick uh, yeah. in the last two months. Still not high enough, but it does give you a sense that this is starting to sink in among average working families. Well, we're going to talk to Betsy Stevenson from the University of Michigan right after this conversation, Gene. I know that I know that you have to, you know, kind of express appreciation for what people are feeling now. But if I can just kind of turn Kaylee's question around and ask it a little bit differently. After hearing economists predict a recession for essentially the last two years, can't right. you stand confidently on the north lawn of the White House tonight and tell our listeners and viewers that the Biden administration found a way around a recession and there's not going to be one this year? You know, I mean, you never want to make 100 percent predictions when you have everything. But, you know, I mean, when you look right now, it's not a soft landing. It's really no landing at all. I mean, again, three years in a row, uh, averaging 3.4 percent, it was two and a half percent average, 3.1 percent year, year over year. Those are strong, solid numbers. And you're now still under 4 percent for the longest stretch in over 50 years. So, yes, I think we feel very good about the strategy that we've had. And I think we learned good lessons from the last time, which is make sure when you have a recovery and investment plan, it, it, it it's a, has a cushion for people, that you don't have state local pulling back, that consumers have a little extra buffer. We saw J.P. Morgan today say that in people's accounts, they, they still have more than they did pre-pandemic. This kind of investment in jobs, this resilience, uh, providing people, as the president says, a little breathing room. I think it has really worked. I think a lot of the economists were wrong uh, and didn't realize the unique circumstances. So, yes, we feel very good. But we also, you know, we never want to underappreciate the people, that a lot of people you know, it's still been a tough few years with the pandemic and uh, the gap, yeah. the inflation people saw. We, you know, we appreciate that. We want them to know, hey, we appreciate that it could, some things can still be hurting. Some prices might seem high, but we're fighting. We're the okay. one. President Biden back here is the one who's fighting for lower drug costs, insulin at $35, lower health care premiums for you know, uh, 20, 30 million Americans, we're the ones that are fighting to still bring your costs lower. 
Well, and one of the things that may help help at least Americans that have children at home could be an expansion of the child tax credit. Obviously, there has been a bipartisan, bicameral deal to do just that in addition with some tax breaks for businesses in Congress. But we're seeing right now that the fate of bipartisan deals isn't always necessarily a good one, perhaps on border security and Ukraine aid as well. Certainly on funding, it's been hard to actually get a budget done. It still hasn't been done. Gene, how do you think about the tax deal or anything else getting over the finish line in, in this Congress in particular? Is the White House a bit powerless here? Well, we, we have a president who never gives up on bipartisan opportunities. And in fact, let's remember that two of his major plans, the, bipartisan, the infrastructure legislation and the CHIPS Act, were both bipartisan. So, of course, we never stop trying. Obviously, we're trying now for bipartisan border and Ukraine legislation. That's important. We're still working. We're still hoping uh, uh, for the best on the tax deal. You know, this is what people, the president said before, that he wasn't going to let, you know, a corporate tax deal go through unless it was helping the child tax credit. What happened, I'm, the thing I'm most proud of in the American Rescue Plan was the child tax credit, how it helped working families, and it lowered poverty to historic levels. The fact you have a bipartisan agreement to do that, uh, you know, I think is significant. And so we are hopeful. And I know there's still the question what will be attached to. But remember, it passed in the House committee 40 to 3. So we're going to keep hope because ten, millions of children, millions of working families will benefit, will have a little extra in their pocket to help. Uh, and, and we know how much that would mean. So, you know, anything bipartisan is tough in this political environment in an election year. But we're going to look for every opportunity because ultimately Americans want us to get things done that help them lower costs, you know, their pocketbook, their ability to support their family with security and dignity and respect.